You've seen wireless chargers. The text now as common as the smartphones they power. But did you know that they come with a big catch? Two, actually. Wireless chargers are inefficient and they may lead to accelerated battery degradation. You can find the full test results in our blog post in the description below. But the gist is this. One, efficiency between wireless chargers varies, but wired is the most efficient. And number two, some wireless chargers may be damaging your battery if the battery pack's temperature regularly exceeds 30 degrees centigrade. But let's start from the top. What is the difference between wired and wireless charging? With wired charging, energy transfers from the outlet through a cable and directly to your phone. It's the most efficient means of charging we have at home, but it's not perfect. Our tests with state-of-the-art GAN charges show that even the best wired setups lose about 35% of their power during normal charging operations. The iPhone 15 Pro in our tests used 18.25 watt hours to charge a 12.7 watt hour battery. This is obviously not ideal, but it is the best case scenario that's available to us. And most importantly, in all our wired charging tests, the battery temperature never rose above 29 degrees centigrade. Wireless charging seems just as straightforward. You drop your phone on a pad and the electricity magically travels to your phone and charges it. No cables, no fuss. But the journey from pad to battery is not as direct as you might think. In fact, the electrons from the pad never reach the phone's battery. Inside the phone, you'll find a wireless charging coil made to receive energy from a charging pad. The pad has a corresponding coil designed to interact with the phone's coil. By manipulating the alternating magnetic fields, the pad can create current inside the receiving coil, thereby creating a current that can charge your battery. If you think this sounds like a lot of work, then you'd be right. Generating a magnetic field to induce current wastes a lot of energy, and it's a big reason why wireless chargers are less efficient. Other reasons are the coils not being properly aligned or the distance between the transmitting coil and the receiving coil being too far. So in long range wireless charging, like some products advertised online or even wireless EV tech, the energy loss will increase as distance between the transmitting and receiving coil increases. Electric cars aside, Apple's MagSafe and the Qi2 standard provide a partial solution to this problem. In order to mitigate the alignment problem, a set of magnetic coils in the charger line up with the opposite polarity of magnets in the back of your phone. This ensures a perfect alignment and maximum efficiency when transferring energy between the two coils. Despite this, 36% more energy is lost when compared to wired charging, while the battery temperature peaks at around 35 degrees centigrade. And remember, this is the best case scenario for wireless charging. In our worst case scenario tests, a misaligned 15 Pro on an Amazon Basics wireless charger saw a whopping additional 104% energy consumed, with charge times increasing twofold. Worse still, the battery temperatures climbed and remained above 40 degrees centigrade. So not only is energy consumption increased with a misaligned battery, but the battery itself will get hotter too. And this brings us to our final charger, the Tesla wireless charging platform. I'm sure Elon thought it was mighty cool to stick this many transmitting coils across the pad. But if our earlier tests prove anything, it's that every single one of these coils will be out of alignment with your device. This results in extended charging times and a toasty battery, very similar in profile to what we saw with the Amazon Basics charger. And the data proves it. No matter how you place your phone on the Tesla wireless charging platform, you'll experience extended charge times, higher energy consumption, and higher device temperatures. The Tesla charger caused our device battery to hit 40 degrees centigrade for extended periods and remained in the high 30s throughout our test. The 2020 pandemic fueled a 37% increase in wireless charger purchases globally. That same year, the wireless market was valued at $12.7 billion, and estimates suggest that the market will grow to $185 billion by 2030 across all categories. Is the convenience of not dealing with cables worth the hidden environmental impact? Well, it's clear that wireless charging is here to stay, so if you must go wireless, choose wisely. The MagSafe and Qi2 certified devices will produce less waste than the Qi1 devices and older generation uncertified wireless charging pucks. For more information about how we conducted our tests, be sure to check our blog post linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, then let us know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons so we can make more videos like this.